Here's my top 7 most cringe inducing movies of 2024. Number 7. Borderlands. The Borderlands games are pretty cringe already. Old Randy Pitchford is one of the world's great virtue signalers. Check out his terrible Nazi punching song. I wonder if there'll be any young girls doing magic in the Borderlands movie. The biggest thing about Borderlands is the cell shaded art style, which should be within their capabilities to translate to the big screen. The other thing is the loot. The instant switching for the new, even better weapon. I'm not sure how they'll get that on the screen. This is the kind of game where you spend half your time comparing stats. Number 6, Craven the Hunter. How can they possibly do Craven justice in 2024? Big game hunter? Probably more like Eco Warrior. I'm waiting for there to be some female assistant who turns out to be a much greater threat. Number 5, Alien Romulus. I know next to nothing about this alien film. I just know it's due in 2024. Will another short-haired brunette woman bring the curse of the Xenomorph upon the rest of her crew? Number 4, Rebel Moon 2 and the Sneeder Cut. The first chapter was just the worst. The only good thing was the effects. Terrible acting, woeful dialogue, ridiculous pacing. I did not care about any of the characters, and the bad guy made the most sense. I still think the princess who will bring balance to the galaxy is the blonde girl who was saved from the struggle snuggle. The Sneeder cut could make things better, because it felt like there were missing scenes, but I doubt it. I think Zack Sneeder is a terrible writer who relies on slow-mo. Number 3, Madam Web. Spider people! The Rainbow Gang is here! Now in female form. This looks like cringe comedy. If there's one thing worse than cringe, it's bad comedy. The effects look terrible. The villain looks non-threatening. Could be a bad start to the year for Sony. Number 2. Civil War. Not the Avengers movie. This is a movie about Texas and California seceding from the USA. Looks like mega cringe. Clear Trump analog. Can't wait for the over the top preppers versus the totally reasonable lefties. Number 1. American Society of Magical N-Words Hey, I can't say that word. And you know that's going to be a problem. Goodbye word of mouth. This has to be bait. A rom-com about how a black guy has to placate the whites to maintain their safety, but he falls in love with the love interest of his client. Now the two male leads are gay slash bi, and they don't look particularly macho, so who else wants to bet the two main males end up falling in love? Rage bait at its finest. Hopefully these movies can subvert my expectations and 2024 will be a year to remember. Here's my top 6 most cringe inducing TV shows of 2024. Number 6, Masters of the Universe Revolution. Kevin Smith murdered He-Man in Revelations. It became the Teela show featuring Evil Lynn. That show had so much potential. When Skeletor and He-Man faced off and King Randor witnessed the energy from their battle, temporarily remove his son's disguise, my mind was racing. King Randor was going to realize that his son he was ashamed of was actually the heroic warrior who has saved the entire planet multiple times. But no, he just got pissy that his most trusted advisor kept a secret from him. Go away, Kevin Smith. You're a liar and a hack. Number five, Marvel Zombies. It's Marvel. And zombies, how can you mess this one up? The same way you mess up Wheel of Time and Halo, by ignoring the source material and changing it to get your progressive message across. The only thing I know is that the actress who plays Kamala Khan in Miss Marvel is the key to the story. So here we go again. Number 4, Agatha Whatever. This is one of those weird spin-offs where no one actually cares enough about the character to care. This show has had many name changes so far, including House of Harkness, Coven of Chaos and Darkhold Diaries. Clearly big fans of alliteration. I like Catherine Hahn, so I hope this one turns out well for her. Hopefully it's not the same writers as WandaVision and they don't excuse her monstrous behaviour. Number 3, The Acolyte. Set in the High Republic era of the Star Wars universe, Acolyte may be the best place of all in this list to buck the trend. I've always wanted them to put some distance between the story and the Skywalkers. If not to allow more creative freedom, than to stop ruining the original trilogy by association. However, in true Disney fashion, we have a black female main and an Asian supporting character. Not an issue in isolation, but this company has been shown to not be able to use diverse characters to good effect. Anyone remember Reva? I'm noticing the cast list says Young Jedi a lot, so I'm afraid it could be another kids show or possibly a sexy high school drama. Number 2. 
Echo, a deaf, disabled Native American superhero. Could be an interesting concept, except for the fact it's coming from Disney, and they have a way of turning everything they touch into propaganda. You know it's going to suck when they emphasize the diversity aspect over the entertainment aspect. I'm not here to be lectured to. Give me a good story and a good villain with good motivations. Make it believable. If she can throw around 200 pound henchmen like they're ragdolls, at least give her super strength or something to explain it. This could be one of those shows that I just dropped because I'm not part of the target demographic Graphic. I didn't watch Ms. Marvel or Bad Batch because it was clear that they were aimed at children. Check out who Disney sees as the target audience for Echo. It's green-haired weirdos and deaf people. Number 1. Rings of Power Season 2 Oh boy, could it possibly be worse than Season 1? My girl Galadriel cuts an effortless swathe through Middle Earth in order to fix her mistake in creating Mordor and Sauron. Sauron basically did nothing to advance his cause in the first season. It was all done by the supposed good guys. And this season we have two Saurons? And one's a different race? How does that even work? I'm hoping it's just that they needed a bigger actor to wear the suit of armor or something. This is one of those shows that you don't actually want to get better because you've already stricken it from the canon. And now it's a matter of how bad it can get for the memes. Hopefully these TV shows can subvert my expectations and 2024 will be a year to remember. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie, thanks for your time, and have a good one.